Blue Goblin here with uh, my latest retro review, and as if you couldn't tell by now, we're talking all about The Legend of Zelda. This franchise through Nintendo has got to be, without a doubt, my absolute favorite gaming franchise of all time. Now, bear with me, I'm not rehearsing this shit, and this is probably going to end up being a two-part video. If not, then yippee, we made it through. So let's look at all the games that I have. I'm going to tell you what makes them special to me, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts on what makes the, uh, or, or my favorite ones. And then I'm going to conclude, as I, as I said in my trailer, I'm going to conclude with my thoughts upon the upcoming game Spirit Tracks. So let's, let's, let's get started by first taking these out of the jackets. Let's start with the one that started it all. Yeah, The Legend of Zelda for the, for the Nintendo Entertainment System. This game right here was what made me want an NES when I was a little kid. And this is, without a doubt, the crown jewel of Nintendo games. This was the game that changed my life. I there are a few there are a few select there are select few video games out there in the world that I will never get tired of playing. And this is the cream of the crop right here. My absolute favorite game of all time, The Legend of Zelda. Truly a classic. This was a game that fit, this was one of the first Nintendo games where you could save your progress had two quests on it. You beat the game, you defeat Ganon, you save Zelda. Oh, but that's not it. You gotta do it again and make it even harder than before. Great game, great everything. Let me put it back in the Nintendo jacket. There you go. Now, let's talk about the sequel. Let's take a look at Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link. This is the sequel for the Nintendo Entertainment System, once again in the gold cartridge. Now, both the first two Zelda games, Zelda and Link, were both made in a gray cartridge as well, but I understand, from what I understand, those cartridges are even harder to find than the gold ones were. Uh, but, then again, I could be wrong. But this game, it was, it was, it was awesome. This game was awesome. It wasn't as awesome as the first Zelda game. There were, there was a great departure on this game from the first game. You didn't get any boomerangs, you didn't get any bombs, you didn't get any bows and arrows, you didn't get any recorders, you didn't get any blue rings, or you didn't get any, um, you didn't get any, um, step ladders, you didn't get any of that stuff. You got, you got the flute and the raft and the, the power of the red ring, which was the shield spell, but this was the first Zelda game where you could actually cast magic spells. You had to, instead of destroy Ganon, you had to stop Ganon from being resurrected. And you had to awaken the, uh, Princess Zelda from, from an eternal sleep by fighting the third Triforce. Yes, in the first Zelda, there were only two Triforces. The Triforce of Wisdom and the Triforce of Power. This game presents us with the Triforce of Courage. Very nice game. Kind of a mix between Zelda and Dragon Quest. It deals with experience points, so that was a good game. Alright, next up, we're going to the Super Nintendo, the SNES with a Legend of Ze The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past. Oh man, just like Zelda did for the, just like Zelda for the NES, this game here was what made me want a Super Nintendo. You know, when I first saw the Super Nintendo, I was like, you know, they're, they're gonna eventually make a Zelda game for it. And then once I saw it, I was like, I gotta have it, I gotta have it. This was the game that started. This was the actual game that started my addiction to Zelda. I loved the first two Zelda games, and the original one is still my favorite. But it was this game right here that truly got me addicted to the concept of the Legend of Zelda. I mean, you thought the you thought just two a two quest game was tough. This is, this deals with a light world, dark world perspective, and this deals with a concept that you know pretty much Ganon has taken taken over Hyrule, turning into the dark world good game just a good game and the the 16 bit graphics are just beautifully done beautifully rendered the music's incredible if you if you missed out on this game then you might have a chance to recapture it with the the game boy the game boy advance re-release but you know other than that 
that was one of the best Zelda games. Now, let's, let's think back at this point in time when these games were brand new. The fans were thinking, okay, those games are awesome, no doubt about that, but what are we going to do about this? Is there going to be a Zelda game on this, the Game Boy? Well, Nintendo gave them their answer with Link's Awakening, the first Zelda game to be featured on the Game Boy. And this one... This game was this game was pretty good. This game was a bit of an abandonment to the, the rest of the Zelda games. There's no Ganon, no Princess Zelda, except it's Link on a mysterious island. He apparently shipwrecked onto this island, and he's trying to get off and try to find a way to get out of the, get off the island and get back to Hyrule. And at the end of the game, I'm sorry to spoil this in case you haven't had a chance to play this. Turns out it was all just a dream, and he's still adrift at sea heading back to Hyrule. I don't even know why he left to begin with, but, oh well. It's the way the game was developed, and it was still good. And it went back to, it went back to the way Zelda was with an A, but with an A weapon and a B weapon, and you're able to switch out and everything. Very nicely done. Now for the game I think everybody loved. Everybody wanted this game. When the Nintendo 64 came out, there were people standing in line, reserving this, you know, and when this game first came out, we're talking about Ocarina of Time. When this game first came out, I literally saw with my own eyes people actually getting into fights. Getting into fist fights trying to get a hold of this game. Seriously, I am not bullshitting you. There were people actually getting into fist fights to get in line to buy this game. It was this, it, it, it captured our attention that much. Thankfully, I didn't get in any fist fights because I had a copy reserved, especially for me. And I got this around Christmas the year it came out. And this has got to be, the uh, if you had to uh, face a top ten list from the fans on what their favorite Zelda game is, odds are this is going to be their choice. The Ocarina of Time, basically a prequel to Link to the Past, which was a prequel to The Legend of Zelda. I'm not going to go into all that, because if you want to learn about that, then just go check out the Angry Video Game Nerds retrospection of it. That's all I need to say about that. And after that, we got a sequel on the Nintendo 64. And this was a bit of an odd... This was, in my opinion, this, this Zelda game was perhaps the oddest one of all. It's called Major, it was called Majora's Mask, and it was yet another Zelda game that didn't really feature Princess Zelda at all, and it features Link, features the child Link from Ocarina of Time uh, going to a, another, another land, and for God knows why, and there's a skull kid from the, from the uh, Lost Woods back in Hyrule who apparently robbed this masked salesman. And he took an evil mask that was called Majora's Mask, and it possessed him. And Majora's Mask ends up being the main boss of the game. Yes, there's no, once again, there's no Zelda, no Ganon, no Triforce. Yet you get back the Ocarina of Time in this game. You learn some brilliant new songs, great graphics still there from the original N64 game. Some, a few tweaks here and there, but really, on all in all, if you get past the oddities of the game, this is really still a very addictive Zelda game. Okay, I think we got time for one more, for two more. Well, when Game Boy, when the Game Boy Color came out, we got these: The Legend of Zelda, The Oracle of Ages, and The Oracle of Seasons. These games were all right. These were games that you had to, you had to get them both to fully enjoy the full game because you had to link the two together to play the third game, which released Ganon. And that game was tough. I mean, these two Game Boy games were perhaps. Really, really tough. Very good game still. Uh, it was good to get portable Zelda, Zelda on the go. Not really much to say about these games, but I just think if you if you're ever lucky enough to find them, I suggest you go ahead and pick them up because a it's Zelda and b they are extremely fun to play and they were done by Capcom. And they did some pretty good pretty good puzzle solving in those games as well. Very nice. I sir I thoroughly suggest you pick those up. Well, uh, that's it for part one, so in part two we're going to cover the rest of the series plus a little bonus. So, until then, I'll see you later.